let's talk about a water pump, an oil cooler, radiators, and thermostats. What are these supposed to do? Well, a water pump is supposed to pump water. You are serious? You know what? It's just like the old, uh, the old, what do they call them? The, the pinwheel things on the old, like, I can't think of the name the, of the thing. The, the, for the, like, you talking yeah. about the circus? Or? <laughs> so, water pumps pump water is where we've got so far. For those of you that didn't know, we're laying down some knowledge on it. Water pumps pump water. There you go. Okay. Uh, yeah, coolant pump. Some, uh, most company countries around the world don't call it a water pump. They call it a coolant pump mm -hmm. or coolant impeller, mm -hmm. which is probably the more correct term than just water pump mm -hmm. because you shouldn't really have just water. You shouldn't have just antifreeze in there. That's a whole other story of another, another Absolutely. Day. Absolutely. But the water pump nowadays in most cars is electric, which causes plenty of other problems. Interesting. And yes. If you For get most a, passenger cars, if you they get are electric. A, yep. Uh, 2006 and on BMW, most of those are electric and it doesn't just spin all the time. It's sure. like in a mechanical engine that's belt driven. Yeah, like a Porsche. Like Porsche, most cars. Yeah. Water pump at idle is just spinning. Well, that takes horsepower to spin the water pump. Right. Which, which horsepower is... takes fuel, uses more fuel to idle. So what if we Mouth made it electric? Gallon, let's just, just kick it on when we need to like it was a radiator fan. Correct. So a lot of, sure. a lot of manufacturers nowadays will just have a water pump not turn until the engine gets scalding hot and they start cycling and turning it on, which is... You've got this oh. huge thermal cycle that's happening with the engine, not necessarily great because you've got water that's stopped, not removing yeah. heat from the or local section. Or even a lot of others I've seen in the past years ago where the, the constant, they don't they don't have a rheostat or a, uh, from like an old heater. Yeah, like a so they, variable they, they are uh, varying voltage. The, both the controlled yeah. PWM, pulse yeah. width modulated to water pump pulsating it, which yep. is not good for a DC electric motor. Nope, they so don't like that. So those pumps will burn out sometimes 20, 30,000 miles. I'm sure yep. plenty of you guys have run into that. Yep. And that's a cost basis for, well, you got to replace the water pump to own the car. That's just what it is to be where it is. Most pumps nowadays, even all of every Porsche GT engine, or actually pretty much every water-cooled Porsche 911, Boxster, whichever, uh, now, I haven't worked on the four-cylinder turbo ones or seen those in person yet, yeah, actually. Yeah. But those all have mechanically driven pumps. They vary the speed. They're not infinitely variable. The water pump speed on a turbo mm -hmm. and a GT3 is different because the GT3 is meant to live at six, seven, eight, nine thousand 9,000 RPMs. Yep. So it's meant to move Turbo's more low speed, more so more the, the pulley size it on yep. it is actually different. And there's okay. other guys who will put a GT3 pump on a turbo because the pulley size is physically, I think it's 15, 20 mil smaller. I don't remember right. the actual number on that so and i know newer cayennes panameras and such they're they're all electric water pump you know those are cars are selling hundreds of thousands of so there's more uh that's more daily driver not motorsports driver. yeah yeah that's that's uh suvs and panameras and if they were great and that was the way to go they would probably start applying those in the motorsport world sure but clearly they're not doing so other than there's drag race guys who do it and then yeah, that's will, for horsepower consequence. Correct. There's yeah. that, and there's the next thing, too. People will take a, put an electric water pump in another car, and they will eliminate the thermostat. Yep. Which the thermostat is a is a not commonly misconstrued word. The terminology is wrong. Because a thermostat and a coolant regulator, while they're Fair. made to have the same yeah. purpose, yeah, 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 they're yeah. different. Sure. The thermostat's supposed to just keep it... Just okay, crack hot, open at okay, a certain, open, now close. It cools off, close it. Bonk, a coolant bonk, regulator on off. is meant to isolate the coolant in the engine. Sure. And then you have the coolant that goes from that point through the radiator. And yep. it's supposed to regulate like your blend air door. Yep. And the heater where you have hot air. And your air-cooled Porsche. Air-cooled water. Well, oil-cooled Porsche. <laughs> you just, you want, you want it hotter, you move this, the whole... 1994 Taurus, you move the slide this way, maybe it's the yeah, top. yeah, the more knob heat, or whatever, and you right? Like cool, and there's literally yeah, yeah, a flap yeah. that moves, and yep. that's just it's yep. a regulator. Once yep. I have that in the engine, the coolant regulator, most new styles are great. So, some will take that out and just run a water pump and just control the speed of it to control the coolant flow. But then, when you get a hot spot in the engine, it can't react quick enough, correct, to all of a sudden get enough cold coolant there, and you so can end up with you, damage. You always should have both, heads, never one or the et cetera, other, yeah, et that's pretty. Yep. Yep. So, all right. So, uh, radiators. Well, we we skip that one. Radiator is where all of the water or coolant runs to at the front of the engine. 
such that it can be exchanged with air so that air can pull energy out of and or temperature out of the coolant so that a cooled off coolant or water can come back to the engine and be be able to have a difference in temperature because energy runs from high temperature to low temperature, same thing with pressure, high pressure to low pressure. Differentials or gradients in things are the driving forces in physics. These are the things that we try and uh, exploit when we are looking for performance. Uh, intercoolers in a turbocharged engine are mm -hmm. another area where yeah, we're looking for The word gradient. radiator is actually a term the drive term. Yeah, it's actually the wrong thing. It's the wrong word. Yeah, we're not in the commercial world. The it's not radiator. It's, yeah, it's heat exchanger. Right. right. In the industrial right. world or military, yeah. Or anything. Yeah, we just use radiator. Just, it's just you're exchanging heat, thermal transfer from one right. to the heat other. Heat exchanger is much is, more. That's the correct word. Yeah. Radiator is just an old that's school. Right. You had a radiator in an apartment. That yeah, just, that it didn't, heated the apartment up because it had hot water it in it. Radiated right. heat. So Correct. a radiator, in the coolant sense of a car, is supposed to radiate heat to the atmosphere. And it's kind of the wrong. It's kind of the wrong thing. It's it's, it's just right the, enough, it's but the it's adopted term. Right. So the terminology yeah, is what enough. everyone uses, even fair if it's enough. not a correct correct phrase. But everybody knows what we're talking about, so it's yep. not that you can't say, "Oh, that's not a radiator." Don't call it that. It's just it's the widely adopted term and there's others uh for that as well oil cooler yep on same cool idea car, same thing it's just a heat exchanger you're exchanging the heat from the oil into the atmosphere and yep. the more efficiently you can do that while we're on that topic um, why did porsche change from oil to water the few uh the few slash many reasons for that the main one and there's actually i have a book on this that yeah. someone that worked at porsche actually wrote this somewhere i have a book i don't know where it is I, it's in my box that says Charles' book. I right on. Watching it you know, right on. For forever. Yep. Uh, the one of the main one of the main issues that Porsche had with in an air cooled engine. Uh, for those of you that have seen one Volkswagen and air cooled mm -hmm. Penzgauer air cooled, whichever I'll say that people. Like, What's Penzgauer? I'm not going there. Uh, <laughs> the Swiss like their European yeah, like their air cooled stuff. They like their air cooled stuff. So you have uh, the engine. It's a heat engine. You're converting potential chemical energy, gasoline, yep. into through heat a thermal process into a mechanical energy. Yep. But through that process, there's loss, and you have heat that's created and lost. Yep. Loss meaning it's All not converted stuff up, into mechanical. Needs to be cooled off to maintain some to steady somewhere. state. You need yep. heat in the combustion chamber to create more energy. Well, yep. just in, I'm just going to say the basic. You need heat to create horsepower. Yep. Or yep. whichever. Fair enough. There's that is a whole complex other yep. deal, yep. which sure. I actually enjoy all the math in that. But you have all this heat and the heat has to go somewhere else whilst the engine overheats, blow head gaskets, pistons melt, whichever. Yep, yep, yep. That's just common in every every engine, every all every internal combustion engine, whichever, rotary doesn't matter. So that heat has to go somewhere. Well, on a air cooled engine, on, on a water cooled engine, you want to keep that thermal Constraint constant. I'm gonna say constraint. Yeah, the Cer uh, the, temp the actual temperature of the water and the oil varies of what is defined as what's best. Yep. And every engineer that works for every company that designs engines will have an opinion needs to be this hot. GT2 RS needs to be 230, 250, and it's great. Right. For emissions. But then this tiny little 2.7 Boxer probably doesn't need to be that. And I'm for sure. Honda Accord, Kiesel, whatever, it doesn't yep. matter. Yep, yep. An air cooled engine, as it heats up, you're just idling along, turbo put to the floor, four or five hundred yep. horsepower, that engine, the thermal expansion of that engine expands at a different rate. You have a, on a six cylinder, you have the three cylinders, the middle one doesn't have the outer layer. Doesn't have exposed. air on the even outside. If, even if they're shielded, captured, right? it's captured from the other two cylinders. So the middle yep. cylinder in an air cooled six cylinder engine generally will always fail first. It expands the most. Yep. Because it, it can't cool off. the piston on yep. the cylinder wall. Which can cause the piston to stick, which means the rod bearing now is just trying to pound just the rod. Pound into it. Yep. And then, okay, you hammer into it, go do your whichever, and you come back from driving it and you get off. Now the engine cools down. Well, the engine's gonna cool down at an uneven rate. Yep. At some point past that, you have an engine where you are creating, attempting to create too much horsepower for whichever reason. Turbocharged engine generating turbo more heat is trying to keep the engine because you need pressure drop to the turbine, so you're restricting. 
that thermal component. Well, that yeah. heat, if you can't go out the exhaust, it's going to go out through the coolant. Yep. So now the engine itself is going to get hotter, and now you need to dissipate the heat. Eventually, there's a point, Porsche, the king of air-cooled, figured out, hey, we can't reliably make this much horsepower. We're only down here, and we're having engine failures. So we have to go to water-cooled. Water has more capacity for uh, absorbing heat than almost any other fluid. It has a what what's known in the engineering vernacular, it's uh, called heat capacity. Uh, it's called CP. And it's water, and you can add additives to water that make it even more. Oil, not as much. So Porsche, to Charles' point, when they were working on, I think it was the 962, right? One of them, yeah. They went, they had oil lubricating the rotating assembly, that stuff back there, and they had water lubricating the head. This is the part that we get yeah, when, really they went, when they went to four valves. Right. 962s is, yeah, water-cooled heads and cylinders, and that's when they went to four valves per cylinder. Yep. And the, the, so and the horsepower went incrementally much higher. But they're able to maintain the temperature of all the internal components of the engine, yep. the level they want, increase the horsepower of the engine, and Cylinder maintain build, reliability. Maintain reliability because they're able to now deal with, if I say it that way, just real quick sure. here without getting into the depths of it, they're able to deal with and manage that thermal component yep. to allow the engine to reliably make this much horsepower yep. instead of this much, yep, yep. and it lasts a long time. Thus, current sure. engines now make how much power reliably. There's yeah. other five, six hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred. My RS6 is a seven hundred ish yeah. horsepower engine it's water cooled it, it, then i put it along that's fine the the air right. cooled air cooled engines are oil cooled because they still they have all the air that goes through the cylinders oil gets pumped through the engine a lot of volume they have yep. a big tank gets hot oil gets pumped to the front of the car there's two heat exchangers radiators oil coolers yep same thing yep they pump oil through them instead of water are they designed differently yes are they crazy Wider differently veins. no they have to be more viscous fluid trying to correct. move through yeah. like wider channels so you can't expose it to as much air so you need more of them more surface area An et cetera, interesting et cetera. point where everyone is trying to make a four valve air cooled cylinder head aftermarket williams did this for singer if i remember yep. right yep. and yep. they actually have a the separate singer dls they have a is that the one yeah okay. yep. they have yep. a separate they have an oil pump that pumps oil through the connecting rod crankshaft and such for actual lubrication of the components. And they, they have, have another, another oil pump for cooling. that pumps oil through the engine, through the case, up through the heads and everything to help remove heat. Correct. But oil is not a great conductor of heat yep. like water is, and, but they use that to pump it. That way it's still an air-cooled or oil-cooled engine. Yeah, which in, great, in my opinion is fucking silly. It's better because than water. Nothing. I mean, that that's a contrived solution to an arbitrary boundary yeah. condition to get guys to that have a hard on for an air cooled engine to pay a bunch of money on an inappropriate solution. I, I have a lot of opinions about this by the words that you're using. You guys can probably figure that out. Purpose, but yep. there's a point when you're trying to go further, especially as a manufacturer, you're limited. Yep. So, with Air cooled to water cooled, it was the same same issue where they're like, yeah. okay, we need to, we want to be more, we want to do better, yep. and we want to move forward. I don't I, on the air cooled thing. I don't agree with four valve cylinder heads being air cooled because when you put the extra valves in there, instead of having two valves, well, now you have four valves. So you're physically taking up more room around the combustion chamber. So to get the heat out of the combustion chamber, s you have less cross sectional area. You need to surface area done. to remove right. the heat right. from the cylinder head. There right. is it possible? Yes. But most guys who are going to build a four liter, four valve air cooled engine probably aren't okay with 300 horsepower or something. I'm just throwing right, a number out. Right. They're going Everybody to want, wants. They're going to want water cooled performance out of it. 991 GT3 motor, yeah, and I want yeah, 9,000 yeah, RPMs, 500 right, horsepower. Right. But I want it to be reliable. Well, you can make it, and then. Which stay tuned. You know, we have a solution for that. Uh, some uh, some year it'll 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 come out. All right. Our producer is telling us to move on. You guys have a lot of shit to cover. So.